Hi Arthur, it's uh, Mark here. I thought I'd take the time to respond to all the material that's appearing on your site by video. Um, I'm a slow typer mate, so hopefully you're okay uh, I'm posting this. And, and one thing that I will say from the outset is that I think it's very cool that uh, you're happy to post side, uh, post both sides of, uh, of any uh, given situation. So I commend you for that, mate. Uh, I want to let everyone know that I'm making this video under full liability you know, whether that's as a sentient being, as a person, uh, uh, as a, you know, wh whatever entity you want to call it, without everyone getting all technical, I'm making this video under full liability. So I stand behind everything that I'm saying, um, and I'm actually not making it just on, upon myself. Uh, you know, I think people need to realise that some of the damning and slanderous comments uh, that have been made. Uh, reflect on the whole Truthology team and the, the team is uh, is quite large now and you know the team is made up of all clients everybody who works for us uh, did our processes and then approached us wanting to work uh, with us because uh, of how fantastic the results were for them so we uh, we have people that have worked for us for years despite the comments made by my former uh, partner Beatrice uh, people that have worked for us for years, like Tracy, Tracy alone did uh, mortgages, uh, personal loans, credit cards, car loans, uh, the whole box and dice with us. And she's been working for us for a long time. We also have Yvonne. Uh, we have our partner now in, uh, in Australia, AB, who also did lots of processes with us. We have Fotis in Sydney. Uh, we've got Greg. Uh, we've got Yvonne. Uh, and we've now got a team over here in the, the UK um, consisting of uh, Sheila uh, and Thomas. So, um, and the team's growing all the time. We have a backlog of people approaching us wanting to work with us. So, so you know, when, when these comments are made, it doesn't just affect uh, me, it affects the whole team. And I'm speaking on behalf of the team to vehemently reject a lot of the, what I'm gonna call as absolute garbage that's uh, appearing. We've got, uh, you know, we've got thousands and thousands of members, Arthur, and uh, hundreds of clients. And what we do, I'm sure everyone's going to appreciate, what we do is highly contentious work, uh, you know, the, the and, 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 and is coupled with highly contentious possible outcomes. Um, we're also dealing with very emotional people. I mean, I do, I do five to six, sometimes eight Skype calls a day with people that come to us that are in a whole world of financial pain. This then reflects in them being uh, uh, under stresses in other areas of their life. You know, a lot of people come to us in, with marriage problems and work issues and, you know, they're, they're feeling very emotional. So, you know, it's a, it's a highly contentious, uh, for lack of a better word, industry that we work in. So do we have some disgruntled, disgruntled uh, clients along the way? Absolutely, as does, as does any venture. And, you know, we, I guess we've learned a lot about how to try and uh, manage people's expectations through all of this because when we first started uh, years and years ago of course we were green around the uh, green around the gills and uh, very excited about all the information that we had learnt through people like Mark Batelic and Peter Duff and uh, you know all the other usual suspects in in this area but uh, you know it, what we've learnt is that we really need to manage people's expectations because no matter how many times and I used to start all my workshops with excuse me, a very important word, which was responsibility. And I think that the most important thing through this is that people take self-responsibility, number one, for how they got to where they are, and number two, picking up the pieces and moving on. And we have always said, always said open-handedly, we have no guarantees through this. This is pioneering, uh, pioneering stuff, and we certainly cannot guarantee the outcomes. And people need to take their own responsibility in continuing their study so that they can truly act as a sovereign and for themselves uh, with competency. So that's one thing that we've definitely learned is that managing people's expectations is, is absolutely critical. So along the way, um, whilst I can say that till I'm blue in the face, I find that when people are emotional, and especially if, if people have done mortgages or something that is attached to their home, something, something so dear to their heart, that we may, need to be super clear uh, about the, the possible outcomes. So yes, we have a terms and conditions. I think. You know, Beatrice has written, oh, if they stand behind everything that they do, why do they have to have this big uh, disclosure document? Well, the reason why we have to have that document is for the reasons that we're talking about here. You know, I think people need to be absolutely clear about their responsibility and the, and the possible outcomes. 
I'll tell you the other thing that, that I've done for the last few years is I record all of my Skype calls, every single one of them categorized week by week, so that if anybody ever comes back and says, you said this, or Truthology said this, I simply send them a copy of the, of the uh, um, appointment that we had. I've only had to do it once. Once, Arthur. So, you know, I think that we've learned a lot, as have a lot of people in this industry along the way, about how to manage people's expectations. I think a lot of people come to uh, people like myself, and it's not just myself. You know, let's be let's be clear here. We get people approaching us all the time who said, "Oh, I did the Thomas Anderson approach, or I did Frank O'Collins, and I, I love Frank O'Collins. Uh, I've just done a big interview with Frank, or I've done Mark Batelix or Beatrice's. We've had lots of people come to us saying, "Beatrice, you know, hung up on me. I, I rang her with an issue, and she told me I had been dishonourable and hung up on me." We get that all the time. Boo hoo, you know. The problem is that, as I said, a lot of people that come uh, looking for magic bullets and, and one-letter answers to all of this are really stuck in victimhood, and they need to take responsibility for themselves. Now, I know that may sound tough, but that is the reality of the situation that we're in. So, yeah, certainly by us having uh, everything recorded and having terms and conditions, you know, are we not then 100% transparent? You know, we can't manage everybody's expectations uh, carefully through this. There are always going to be some people who are not happy. And, you know, I have to say, Arthur, that uh, you being a family man, you're going to appreciate this. Why this came to, to bear for us was a, a few years ago, we had a client who uh, did a couple of, of th three, four mortgages through us, a truckload of credit cards and so forth. And the husband uh, committed to doing quite a bit of study, but the wife didn't. Okay, now we've learnt a lot that, that both parties have to be on board with this. I want to tell you what happened, mate. She, they started getting a few letters, as, as is expected, from, from lenders. Um, and uh, my beautiful partner, Steph, had lent this lady a whole heap of books about how to get pregnant and, and on parenting and all this sort of stuff because uh, she was trying to get pregnant. She walked back into this lady's shop in Byron Bay just to gather, gather a couple of the books back. And this woman stood in Steph's face. Steph was eight and a half months pregnant, Arthur. This is an eight and a half month pregnant woman. Not that what was said should happen to any other human being. And, and this uh, lady stood one inch away, came right at Steph's face and said, I have dreams about how to kill you. I want to kill you. You know, you should be dead. And Steph just burst into tears and came running out of the shop. And when she told me, I'll tell you what, mate, for, for as much meditating and work I've, I've done on myself, it took everything I had not to go in there and, and deal with that situation. I think that's absolutely disgraceful. Should we have to deal with that? Should, is that part of managing people's expectations? I think not. And so certainly we're very clear now with people about what their responsibility in this whole process is. Okay, so Arthur, you know, I, I just want to make comment here about about some of the things that, uh, that you've said about uh, us ripping people off. Because when you make comments about me, you make comments about the whole Truthology team. And uh, so we're, we're all going to respond perhaps at different times. And, you know, you've also made comments about a sour taste that I left in your mouth in 2009, Arthur. So I certainly hope that you post this on your site because here's my response, mate. I uh, learned of Mark Patelic doing a course down at your place in Barrel. I had already just done, I think about two or three weeks earlier, one of other Mark Patelic's other courses uh, up in Queensland. This was at a time, Arthur, when I had just woken up to all this information and had walked away from my financial planning business. I had a financial planning, fledgling financial planning business. And of course, when I got this information, I couldn't do it anymore. And, uh, and, and that broke up that financial planning company. Um, the, we were so excited about coming down to see Mark Patelic. I actually got uh, a couple of the other partners in the business who was Craig Finlay and Jamie Lyons. The other person who came down in the car with us that night was Beatrice, my partner at the time. We drove all night from Queensland down to your place in Barrel. We were late. We were late getting there, so we weren't there for the, the signing uh, time. And uh, and yes, mate, we, we didn't pay you uh, at the signing time. Now, I remember standing with Craig uh, on one side and Beatrice and Jamie on the other. And mate, you came, you came charging up to me, right up into my face, with this whole story about uh, us not paying you was unethical, you had costs to cover and whatever it was, this whole story. Mate, after you left, we all looked at each other and went, whoa, what was that about? Mate, you know, okay, we didn't, we didn't pay you on time, but dude, we had driven all night. We were absolutely exhausted. 
And, uh, and, and I'm absolutely positive, mate, we would have paid you. That We went in the business of driving interstate to rip you off, mate, to watch Mark Patel XP. Come on. You know, I mean, and you know what? There was other parties there. It wasn't just Mark Darwin. So I don't know why Mark Darwin left a sour taste in your mouth. There was Craig Finlay, Jamie Lyons, and Beatrice. And Beatrice has brought this up in her conversations. And in fact, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can hardly give you a straight face. Beatrice had collected the money from everybody else. So it was Beatrice who needed to give the money to you. Anyway, if that, Arthur, if that is what left a sour taste in your mouth, mate, come on. I mean, I, I've done uh, many, many seminars since. And we used to have people driving overnight from Canberra, from Cairns, from all over the place to come to our workshops. And they would arrive late. Mate, I wouldn't be up in their face at lunchtime, telling them that what they were doing was unethical. I would welcome them with open arms saying, gee, you look tired, do you need a cuppa? So, mate, if that if that is what the sour taste in your mouth was from 2009, mate, I've watched enough of your posts to know that you're a very aware man. So I think it's time to move on for that, mate. And if, if that has set the platform for you, uh, thinking Mark Darwin rips people off and, and rips people off, mate, if you only knew, mate, I'm sitting in our little office here in our home in, in Scotland. If you only knew how often Steph tears shreds off me and how often I tear shreds off Steph because we do so much work for free. Mate, there's times where we're up till two in the morning talking to people. Rip, rip people off, mate. <laughs> We've had clients who are considering suicide. They actually text Steph late at night. This is when we were back in Australia saying, that's it, I'm out of here, I can't do it anymore. We've made pots of soup, mate, and gone around to their house and sat with them till all hours in the morning. You know, we've got people that uh, have been in dire straits. I've gone to help them uh, move house. You know, we do so much work for free. I, I, got, I got calls yesterday from people using this OPPT stuff. And I'm, mate, I'm with you, Arthur. I, I, I think that there's, uh, there's holes in it. But... You know, I do so much work for free. And you know what the funny thing is? In the early days, some of these clients that we did work for free became the squeak, the oily, the, sorry, the squeakiest wheels. Uh, you know, anyway, mate, I, I just, I do find it interesting, Arthur, that in your site, you put a lot of other truthers down, like Frank o. Collins. You, you know, uh, I've even seen you put Peter Duff down. Oh, let, let's talk about Peter Duff, you know. There's talk around that we've plagiarised Peter Duff's foundation documents. I'm happy to talk about that if I may. I went to a Peter Duff workshop around the same time. I think it was late 2008, 2009. And uh, I found Peter very captivating. Uh, you know, his whole stories of sitting in the mountains and reading the works of Mahababa, the book of Mahababa that's this big and reading the Quran and the Bible and meditating and truly coming into this uh, sentient being that he is. And uh, so actually, Arthur, I put on two workshops uh, for Peter uh, and contacted my whole database through my financial planning business, which really disheveled them, and put on two workshops for Peter. Peter then came to stay in my house, mate, and I'm doing this. Mark James Darwin is doing this under full liability, right? Uh, Peter then came to stay in my house, my house with Beatrice at the time. And um, this uh, apparently totally aware man then proceeded to drink two and a half bottles of red wine Smoke some uh, some wacky dacky, and I don't have any issues around around people doing that. Although I did find it interesting, and uh, started telling me that older men like Peter, older men carrying the wisdom in their seed, should seed younger women, and that he believes women should be giving birth at the age of twelve to fourteen because that's when their body is at its prime. So the older men with the seed should pr impregnate the twelve-year-old girls, and that in fact that's what he does, mate. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Arthur, I know you've got kids. Mate, if any 60-year-old men come and want to uh, have sex with my 12-year-old daughter, lock out. There's actually a word for that, mate, and I find that morally, ethically, and anything else, uh, irreprehensible behaviour. So, of course, I have nothing to do with him. And you know what? Peter Duff made threats to me uh, and did uh, send a cease and desist notice. And I said, no problem, Peter, if you want me to go public, which is what I'm doing now, I'm happy to go public. We do not use Peter Duff's document. Uh, the document that I paid for through Peter Duff, which he told me then became my intellectual property, has been altered many, many times through myself, through our partner, through a lawyer and a barrister. And uh, and so, so bring it on, Peter Duff, and, and anyone else that has any issues. It's absolutely disgraceful, mate, who, who you are. And, you know, collecting money on behalf of, behalf of New Humanities Collaborative or whatever it is, to go off and set off your little orphanages with your young women in the Philippines. Disgusting.
absolutely disgusting and anyone watching this needs to be aware. So, you know what, Arthur? There, there's my truth of it, mate. Um, I'm here to let people know who are watching this that we at Truthology are 100% proud of, of what we've done. Have we learned some lessons along the way? Absolutely, absolutely we have. And that's why we are super clear about what the, the path ahead is. Uh, in terms of what we do with credit cards and personal loan, we've had an absolutely brilliant uh, record. Uh, and I'm happy to talk with people about that. Whenever people talk to me about mortgages, and I'm sure that people watching this, I'm hopefully will get on and, and verify this, I could not be clearer about the risks in doing a mortgage. And in fact, we haven't taken a mortgage on for a long time. We actually help people uh, arrange a, a hardship arrangement for at least six months and give them a heap of information uh, to study so that at the end of that six months, they have a very, very clear understanding of the risks the responsibilities and the possible outcomes of taking on a mortgage. So I'm here to say that everybody at the Truthology team is offended and disgusted by some of the slanderous comments uh, put on your site. And uh, we are extremely proud of what we do. We, we love our fellow men and, and, uh, and our fellow brothers and sisters. And some of the comments on here ho hopefully will now be seen for what they are. Uh, uh, what's the date today? I think it's the 7th of, uh, of May 2013. So just to uh, put a timeline on this. Anyway, Arthur, um, mate, I wish you and your, your family well. Um, we're proud of what we do. And I certainly hope that you put this post up as a, as a response from us. And that's, you know what, that's pretty much all we're going to say on this because we, we're just going to get on with it. We're sick and tired of all these negative slanderous comments. Okay, Mark, signing off for now. G'day Arthur and uh, Fiona, it's Mark again, obviously. Um, look, I, I hope you guys are okay with me doing videos. As I said, I'm not a very fast typer and I think um, possibly things can get uh, misinterpreted or people reading between the lines with uh, with things that are written. So just easier for me to do uh, and more transparent, hopefully, to do uh, just do a video. But uh, look, I read something, one of my clients let me know that, that uh, I don't know, you guys wrote something about, you know, me making a, a threat or threatening Beatrice and she rang you very upset. <laughs> um, uh, I've been actually in contact with Beatrice over the weekend, quite a few emails toing and froing, and uh, there was no threat, guys. Uh, you know, I basically sent her a video and if she wants to post it, it was a very private video between Beatrice and I. Um, it wasn't sent to Mark Patelic or anyone else. I don't know where that's come from. It was sent to Beatrice and to Beatrice only. It was a very private video between her and I, where I uh, actually said quite a few times throughout it. As I said, if she wants to send it to you so you see it, that's fine. But I said quite a few times throughout that what I'm looking for is a peaceful resolution. Uh, I let her know that, you know, a lot of the stuff that she'd written um, wasn't true. It's certainly about us charging consultancy fees and never getting back to people. You know, there was one instance she brought up was a client by the name of Eamon. Uh, Eamon did pay me to look at uh, a whole heap of procedures that he was doing, I believe, through Mark Patelic and, and, and Beatrice on accepted for value. I said, we, we don't subscribe to accepted for value, can't, can't help you, um, you know, you either need to go down that route or, or this route. All the best and, and best wishes, and, uh, but you know that we didn't think it would work and it didn't work. He lost his house and car and whatever it was along the way. So to say that, you know, I charged him $500 and didn't get back to him, is bollocks and I've cleared that with Beatrice as I did with a lot of the other stuff that she wrote that was either partial truths or non-truths. So mate, if she, and sorry mate and Fiona, if she wants to share that video, people will see that it wasn't a threat. It was me simply saying that, hey, you know, uh, there are a lot of people who come to the likes of Beatrice and Mark and myself and the Thomas Anderson group and all the other groups that do this sort of stuff in a world of pain they hear what they want to hear. They don't perhaps take full responsibility. And if things don't go their way, then the last person they want to blame is themselves. They'd rather blame other people. And, you know, I've got a lot of complaints from uh, other people in the industry. I don't pay it any attention, guys. What's the point of paying it attention? Because I know that that's what they're doing is playing the blame game. And I'm very direct with them. I say, go back to, the, go back to whoever you have the complaint with. Um, I'm really not interested in hearing it. You know, there's a fantastic book that I'm sure you guys have read. I read it years and years ago called The Four Agreements. And one of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. And part of that is not entering into gossip. There's so much gossip goes on in this industry. Man, I've never seen anything like it. 
And, uh, you know, we, guys, we're just, we're just tired of it. And, you know, we like to think that we're very, and we are very transparent with everything that we do. But if people are going to complain and not come to us in the first instance, then so be it. There's nothing we can do about it. But we get it in return. So that was my point in sending that to Beatrice was I haven't responded in any way. I, I've got dozens of people that have complained about her. I don't go online and stretch the truth and let them know that Beatrice rips people off. And I let Beatrice know that. I don't think she rips people off. I think Beatrice and Mark Patelic and everyone else in this industry, industry do the best they can with the information that they have at the time. And things are always, always changing. So I don't enter into any of that. That was the reason for my contacting Beatrice was to say, hey, you know, I could go public with all this and it turns into a bun fight. Is that what we all need to do? Is that what we all need to do is sit and, and, and put each other down and actually put people off uh, at least having a go against the, it's the banks that are corrupt. It's the courts that are corrupt. You guys know that, you know, we need to work together. So anyway, you know, guys, the, the whole notion that, that uh, either Mark Darwin <clears throat> or, uh, or Truthology or anyone that works with Truthology rip people off to me intimates a whole lot of malice and, uh, uh, and ill intent. We don't rip people off. You know, we do the best that we can. As I said before, we've learned a lot along the way. Uh, certainly a few years ago, we got we got quite big and um, had people working for us that perhaps we probably could have screened a little bit better. We sort of gave a jersey to anybody that came along and wanted to work with us and we were so busy with inquiry. So, you know, we've learned a lot about pulling it back a little bit closer to home and and really trying to up the, the service that we provide. But to say that we rip people off intimates a lot of malice and we don't have malice. Rip people off. Guys, can I share with you? We drive a 17-year-old Mitsubishi that is on its last legs. We own nothing. We own nothing. We don't own a house. We don't even own any furniture. We're renting a really modest house here in, in Scotland uh, that's, uh, that's furnished. We don't own a Zac. Anything that we have, we send off to the various charities that we have, like Free to Shine. And if you care to look at our new, last newsletter or uh, the things that we're doing, um, we send everything that we have off to Free to Shine. We have nothing. I can't tell you guys how often we, we get down to having, funny enough, 12 bucks, $12 either in the bank or in coins in the, in the little compartment of the middle of our car. We don't have any money. <laughs> so, you know, for all this stuff that we're ripping people off of $8,000 and all this money, wow, I'd really like to see where that is because uh, it ain't us. <laughs> we, uh, we get down many times. In fact, we've considered if we're ever going to write a book of memoirs about what we've done, we might call it 12 bucks. Because the amount of times we've got down to 12 bucks and, and thought, how are we going to feed the kids for the weekend is ridiculous. And anyone that knows us knows that that's the case. So anyway, you know what? Uh, six minutes and six seconds this recording's gone on for. Six minutes and six seconds too long. I'm done with it. If anybody wants to contact me directly, do so. My Skype address is coming back to Harmony. So it's coming back and the number two, Harmony. Happy to talk to anybody about uh, any genuine grievances um, genuine grievances that they have with us. And of course, you know, especially if you want to speak to uh, Steph, Steph is the most warm hearted, loving, beautiful being I've ever met. And I'm not just saying that because she's my beautiful lover and mother of my kids. She's amazing. And uh, I'm sure lots of people will testify to that. So I hope that we can all put this, uh, these shenanigans behind us and, uh, and work together. And, you know, I'm going to say, Arthur and Fiona, we love your site. We, we promote your site on our site. Even though there's slanderous and rubbishy things written about us, we think the Love Site, Love site is, uh, is amazing. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of respect for you guys. Uh, in fact, funny enough, Arthur, Steph said to me the other day, because she's watched a lot of your posts and so forth, that um, she thinks in some ways we're a lot alike, quite outspoken and, and very passionate. But uh, anyway, sending you guys love and, um, you know, let's all get on with it. Okay, see you.